Today we are going to be learning about the trans theoretical model of behavior change. This is some stages that you go through typically when you are trying to create a new behavior pattern. And it seems fairly effective, lots of people use it, so we're going to learn what that is. Let me jump over here. Okay, so the trans theoretical model of behavior change. The first step is pre-contemplation. So this is the stage where oftentimes you're unaware of what you're trying to accomplish or what you need to accomplish, or else you might be aware of something, but you are unwilling to make the change for at least six months. So uh, next would be the contemplation phase. Hopefully in this class, we're going to move some of you from pre-contemplation to contemplation. This is where you're thinking about a change occurring within the next six months. So you're starting to entertain the idea. Next, we have preparation. This is the phase where you are going to be making preparations. You're about 30 days out from actually implementing this. Uh, for instance, when if, if you're trying to stop smoking, if you set a quit date, about 30 days out, you have some time to prepare emotionally, physically, mentally, right, for that change. So hopefully we'll be in preparation and then moving into action this semester. So we're going to implement these behavior changes, and this will be our action phase. Typically lasts about six months to develop that habit. Uh, it can take longer than that. But this is you actually implementing your goal into your life. And then we have the maintenance phase. This is anywhere after six months to five years. It can be a long time. Some research shows that uh, with smokers, it takes five years before there's actually, like I think after five years, about 10% of people still relapse. Whereas at 12 months, about 40 to 50 percent of people still relapse. So the maintenance phase can be quite a while for most people. And then the last stage is the termination phase. So this is kind of where you no longer have to apply yourself. That activity is just kind of ingrained in your habits. Uh, some people would also throw a relapse in there as a stage because at any time you can jump back a stage, you can move around stages. These aren't always, you know, in order, but typically when you're trying to implement a change, they do go in order. So uh, now for what you're going to do for your assignment along with this video is you're going to think about these stages and you're going to think of some behaviors that you have that match these stages. So for me, for pre-contemplation, I was really trying to think of something and that's kind of the definition. I couldn't think of anything at the moment that I'm six months out from, so I picked a past example. I used to not realize I had to go to the dentist for teeth cleanings or I didn't floss, but now I'm on it. So back when I was in college, that was definitely a pre-contemplation phase, something I was unaware of. For the contemplation phase, for me, I've been comp I've been uh, thinking about uh, learning some jujitsu. Now, because of coronavirus and the cost, I'm not quite ready for that. So I'm about, I'm at least six months out. So that's why it's my contemplation phase. Preparation phase, uh, my goal for this semester is I'm going to be fermenting foods. So I've already kind of started, so I'm kind of in the action, but we're going to leave that in preparation because I'm kind of where you all are. For action phase, this was my, my summer goal was to read more. Let's read every day. I was trying to read 40 pages a day. Uh, I'm still in the action phase because I haven't fully maintained that yet. So hopefully that'll be moving to the maintenance phase at some point soon here. And then maintenance for me would be exercise. I've been exercising my whole life. Now, sometimes I fall out of the maintenance phase and I fall back to preparation or action. Uh, but that's just the way life is. I pretty much ingrained the behavior so it's not too terrible for me to get started again. Okay, good. Uh, there's a few other processes we need to learn when we're talking about this. So, and it'll help us, it will help us uh, implement these changes into our life. So, we have some cognitive processes that you should know. First one is consciousness raising. So, again, if you're in pre-contemplation and you're unaware, this is you raising awareness. So, in this class, we're going to cover a bunch of different topics. Hopefully, that'll raise your consciousness regarding a bunch of health aspects from financial health to relationships, exercise, nutrition, you get the idea. Mental health, right? So, uh, dramatic relief. This is uh, a feeling associated with the desire to change. So, uh, media is really good. So, videos, maybe music can inspire us. Uh, watching somebody else's story can inspire us to make that change in our life. 
So watching somebody quit smoking and talk about the benefits, that can be some dramatic relief. Watching somebody else go through this can be some dramatic relief. Environmental evaluation, this is going to be you evaluating how your environment changes around you with your changes that you're making. So oftentimes we have a positive effect on others as we go through our change. Uh, you might start exercising and you might motivate your roommate to exercise, for example. Self-reevaluation, this is you kind of creating a new self-image. Sometimes when we have a behavior, it's kind of who we are. Let's say, let's say you smoke weed with your friends. Sometimes that can be part of your self-image and letting that go can be really difficult. So this is kind of you starting to shift your perspective of who you actually are without that old behavior that was maybe unhealthy or with this new behavior that you're implementing. And then social liberation. This is you kind of shifting your social support, maybe your social network to support you in your new endeavor. Um, so yeah, you, it would be good to have some wind at your sails with public support there. So those are some cognitive processes. Let's look at some behavioral processes. First one is self-liberation. So we're going to make some goals and in about two or three weeks, you're going to make a commitment and we're going to start acting on those goals. Uh, this is kind of you freeing yourself from your past and starting a new journey, we could say. We have counter conditioning. This is you substituting an old behavior for a new one. For instance, uh, with trying to stop smoking, people typically go out with their friends on a smoke break or whatever. This can be a hard habit to break because you can have a ritualistic tradition with it. So some things you could do is you could vape e-juice with no nicotine in it so you can still get that ritualistic feel um, if you can you know, avoid uh, actually smoking. Uh, maybe you need, if you get a craving, you have to go exercise or you have a preset behavior that's going to replace your old behavior. Uh, relationships, so helping relationships. This is you having support from the people around you. You want to support yourself with people who are encouraging you to improve your life. If your friends are not encouraging you to improve your life, you should really evaluate whether, whether you should be in that group, I would say. Reinforcement management. This is you setting rewards. So we're going to have an assignment this semester where you are going to create a reward and you're going to go reward your actions. So let's say you don't want to get up in the morning to exercise. A good way to incentivize that is to tell yourself, if I wake up and exercise, I get to go buy my favorite coffee drink, right? And that might be actually worth you waking up in the morning. So we'll set up some rewards. And then stimulus control. This is you managing your environment. So Let's say with cigarettes again, you can't have cigarettes in the house because you smoke them. You have to know who you are and then set up your environment to uh, work with you. Maybe you can't get up in the morning and pack your gym bag and go to the gym. So you pack your gym bag ahead of time. So all you have to do is grab your bag and go. These are ways you can manage your environment. Okay, we have one final thing for your assignment this week regarding this video. And this is, you're going to make a pros and cons list. So actually, you're going to look at your contemplation or preparation phase. Think about some things you might want to implement for this semester. And then we're going to make a pros and cons list. There's some good research saying making a pros and cons list can help you make that next step to actually make a change. So for me and my fermenting goal, I looked at some pros. Uh, it's going to help my gut bacteria. I'm enjoying it. It's a new skill. New skills are always good. Remember, they, when we put ourselves in new situations, we have new DNA that turns on. Uh, it's a good soda alternative that's low in sugar. It saves me money because kombucha, which I've been brewing, is expensive. And it should improve my nutrition. And we'll talk about fermented foods when we get to nutrition. Some cons that we have. Uh, it's taking some time, but to be honest, it's not a whole lot. Uh, and I have to invest some money in it, but to be honest, I'm saving money, so that's kind of a pro. So again, what I want you to do, make your own pros and cons list, make your uh, trans-theoretical uh, activities, and then submit those on Blackboard along with your notes. That is it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.